Hi Aquarius, welcome to your reading for September 2024. Um, this is going to be for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Many of you are intuitively guided and I thank you for paying attention to your intuition. You know that's your spirit guides nudging you. Um, that means there's probably signs here, whether you're an Aquarius or not. Um, though I feel like, you know, we're all a little bit of everything. Uh, you could certainly be in love with an Aquarius, whether platonically, romantically. Same thing. Your guides know you're here. So, um, again, they're going to give you signs. And by the way, I feel like, you know, feel free to ask your guides to give you signs of confirmation throughout the reading. Uh, whether it be like a name, a number, a song that just comes to my mind, which happens often. Um, I know I'm a terrible singer, but... It's like I know these songs, like if a song comes in my mind and I sing a line of it, I feel like I do it because it relates to someone. I just I just open myself up. You know, I am a vessel for our spirit guides to deliver messages. Um, and although I have to put September, you know, for the for the reading because it's a monthly, I do want you to know that I feel like a reading just finds you in divine timing, you know, so you know, maybe this reading you don't see for six months, but yet it fits you perfectly. Or you watch a reading that's like a year old. But again, it's it's the exact messages that you needed to hear. You know, you were open at that time. And to me, that's what divine timing is all about. So um, this month, we are doing um, opposite signs. So what I mean by that, instead of like just following the calendar, like, you know, I always start with the birthday month, which was Virgo, you know, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. What I've been doing is the opposite sign. So I did Virgo, then Pisces. Um, I'm doing yours. And then I'm going to do Leo, who is your opposite. And, you know, I was intuitively guided to do that. But I have to tell you, now that I'm almost done, I totally understand why it just makes so much sense to me, uh, especially spiritually. Um, and one of the reasons why is because our opposite sign can really teach us a lot and vice versa. So your opposite sign is Leo. And um, I will be doing Leo after your reading. And then I'm done for the month. It's amazing. I can't believe I have... All September reading is already done. And again, some people are like, well, how can you do September before just September? Well, because I just, again, open myself up to our spirit guides. <clears throat> Excuse me. Something else we're doing for September is we're bringing back the major arcanas. And I use these like as bullet points, you know. Um, I shoot for three to four cards. But I don't deny any that come out, you know, five cards come out, we're going to take them. Um, but I am shooting for three to four. And many times they can tell their own little story. But I really find them quite amazing as they relate back to like the main spread. So we're going to use these. We will start with Mother Mary for her words of wisdom. Um, I am using the Gilded Tarot to clarify or go deeper. You know, the readings have been even extra long for September, but I just feel like this would, well, I mean, I'm not putting any time limit on them. I'm just like, whenever they're over, they're over. Um, but I feel like a lot of people have been going through a lot. You know, we had seven plans and retrograde. Many of them are getting ready to go direct now. So ah, we can breathe again. Um, yeah. So, anyways, we are going to use the Universal Tarot for your main spread. And that's another thing I'm doing. I'm using the same decks for each opposite sign. Because um, I am looking for synchronicities. You know, I feel like it just, it can teach us. So, why not? Um, but let's go ahead and let me move these over. Let's start with Mother Mary. I'm going to bring the lid down. There we go. Um, everything is always pre-shuffled. And many of you know that, but anyone who is new, first of all, welcome to our soul family. Um, I just want you to know that, like, you know, I probably spend like 15 minutes just shuffling. 
I open my mind, I quiet my mind. And I really do this more for you. But, okay. <clears throat> Let's just take a moment and just relax our minds. Let go of control and just let it flow. So let's begin. Mother Mary, Aquarius. My daughter has an Aquarius moon. Aquarius, Aquarius. Prayer, prayer. Instead of worrying, I feel like I didn't say that right. Instead of worrying, why can't I say that? I pray about this situation to bring about real solutions. You know, prayers, prayers are answered. Um, many times prayers can be answered differently than what we prayed, you know, but better, I feel like. Um, so prayers being answered don't worry, hand it over, like hand, you know, I feel like what it means is like the things that you cannot control, instead of trying to control them, just hand them over to God, like just hand them over, and um, yeah, your prayers will be answered, okay, and I may take one at the end of your reading also, it seems to be the way it's been going, so, you know, we'll wait till the end of reading and see if, um, it really calls for one. All right, let's give the major arcanas a shuffle. Let's give them a cut. And, excuse me, let's begin. You know, I say let's begin, but I really feel like the minute I hit um, record, we have begun. We have begun. We've only just begun. Okay, well, they want a nice shuffle. Okay. We have the strength card. Interesting, that is your opposite sign, Leo. Strength card. Um, you know, the strength card talks about our own inner demon self and, you know, the willingness to go deep, to like, you know, tame that line within us, tame the things that can sometimes get in our way. Um, and when you do that, you know, you end up with a real sense of power you know, courage, here, strength. I find it interesting that it's your opposite sign. We have the high priestess. This is your intuition. You know, the high priestess to me, when you think about Tarot, the fool is always the beginning of a new path, right? And the magician is the first mentor that the fool meets. And the magician is teaching the fool that you really possess everything that you need to be successful on this new journey. You know, it does feel like something new is opening up. And the second mentor that the fool meets is the high priestess. And the high priestess teaches the fool that I am your GPS in this lifetime. You want to trust this. You want to trust me. And me is you, right? It's your intuition. It's going to guide you. Um, interesting with the strength card right before, there could have been some things that, you know, like maybe I wasn't sure there were signs. Um, I definitely feel like there's some type of energy or even someone you're overcoming. You know, the strength card also has the infinity symbol in it and to me the infinity is symbol as above so below no beginning no end so you know another way of saying that is there's nothing that you're going to experience in this lifetime 
that as a soul you haven't already been through. You can overcome. Hmm, another Leo card. So this is Leo's ruler, the sun. You know, the sun is the illuminator. So if there's anything I need to know, you know, if there's anything, let's just say, because the strength card is the first card, if there's anything that I myself am, am holding my belt myself back from, the sun will illuminate that for you. You know, the sun's like a brand new day, a new beginning. Um, when the sun comes out, you know, you don't have to worry, especially with your intuition right next to the sun. It's like, to me, it means the signs will be very clear. Can I deny them? I can. You know, that's free will. Um, but nonetheless, I feel like they're going to be very clear. We have the Hierophant, part of Taurus. And by the way, I'm giving you the signs. Um, but as many of you know, I'm really just reading the energy. I give the signs because I know some people want me to give the signs. And I'm happy to do that for you. But other than that, I'm just looking at the energy. And it's interesting because the Hierophants come up quite a bit. And here it, it just looks to me like the Hierophant is about to, you know, give you a blessing. It's blessing you. It may be where prayers coming from. It is a number five. So potential change. And I already felt that. I felt like there was some change coming into your life. But again, the sun and the high priestess, it's your guiding light. You don't have to worry about it. And then we have the tower. Well, that's probably why I felt like something was ending. You know, and the strength card mirroring the tower. So the tower is like disruption. The tower is something that may have happened outside of your control it can be it certainly is an ending to something um but if it's in the tower energy you know truth be told i probably wanted to end anyway and if i don't then you know often i feel like the tower is something that we're subconsciously hoping for but yeah there's the hierophant like still giving this blessing. The sun is right in the middle of, of all this energy. Again, your intuition is really being illuminated. Your path, let's say. You know, I often feel in the tower's energy that someone may have fallen from grace. And it doesn't have to be you. It could be someone else. Um, I feel like the tower is also energy that wants to fade away. Did we allow it to fade away? So, the sun, a new beginning. The strength card, a number eight, also stands for a new beginning, but also infinity. The hierophant, a five, a change, right? But it's after the tower. Um, and I feel like it's, it's you receiving a blessing after this tower. You know, the whole tower didn't fall down, just the steeple. So, let's go ahead and bring in the universal tarot. Let's give them a shuffle. Or two. I do find it interesting you have two Leo cards and um, literally we're doing opposite signs with Leo being your opposite. You know, that may say to you that um, really pulling on Leo's energy, you know, thinking about Leo's energy um, and how can I use it to my benefit? How can I overcome the tower? And I have a feeling... You know, Leo, when there's a tower, Leo can sometimes cause that tower. Um, I don't feel like they get stuck in that tower energy very long. All right. Let's go ahead and begin with the Universal Tarot.
Like a dust, the sun again. Following, or what follows is the Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles is like that tower. You know, the Five of Pentacles speaks of something, you know, some type of change. Again, a number five, but some, some type of change that maybe I didn't ask for. Um, it can be temporarily difficult energy. But, you know, I feel like in the Five of Pentacles, where you're really heading, though you may not know it when you're in this energy, you're really heading towards what I call your soulmate family. Like, soulmates will, you know, and, and I don't even mean romantically, you know, maybe one will be. But I feel like, you know, you're just going to, like, find your soulmate gang. Where maybe before I didn't feel I had that support. So this is someone who, you know, I feel like I don't have the luxury of doing nothing when the Five of Pentacles shows up. Like, I have to keep moving. Uh, for some of you, it could be like a loss of a job. But it, be, it may be moving you to, to, you know, something better. Or, you know, when I think of Pentacles, I do think of your money. But I also think of your creativity. You know, what you do in the world. And the sun is illuminating this energy. So, you know, again, the sun being a new beginning, your illuminator. You know, what's ever done in the dark will come to the light when the sun comes out. And the tower kind of feels like if there's any dark energy, it was within that tower's energy. <laughs> All right. You know, and the Five of Pentacles is coming over the High Priestess or under the High Priestess. So again, even though this may be some type of change that I didn't really ask for, nonetheless, it happens. The High Priestess is like, just trust me, trust your intuition, you know, like in the direction you take next. Hmm, Seven of Swords. Interesting. I feel like everyone's been getting a Seven of Swords. And um, this is not easy energy. I normally read it as a person. Uh, the meaning of the card is deception and envy. You know, sometimes people do hurtful things because truth be told, they are envy. Envious. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, but I do feel like it, it comes from a lower vibrational energy. This is someone who definitely takes more than their fair share. But it's under the sun. So for some of you, like, it's illuminating the fact that you may have been dealing with someone who is more than comfortable to lie. You know what I mean? Like, like I'd rather lie than face it, like, you know, face, you know, like, what you're going to say to me. So I'm just going to lie. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. But that doesn't make it the truth. Um, oftentimes I feel like this is like a little bit of narcissistic type energy. You know, my way or the highway. And I often feel too that this is the type of energy where if it's a person, they do expect you to lower your vibration if you want to be with them. But. Again, the sun right above it. You know, some of you, just maybe, you know, you couldn't deny that there was someone like this in your life. And, the you know, the only way I feel like to change this type of energy is to leave it. Now, of course, that's your personal choice. But it is of a lower vibration. It's like if someone's trying to get away with something behind your back, the sun's going to, you know, make sure, make sure that you see that. And then what you do is up to you. That's free will. But boy, that's been coming out a lot. All right, let's keep going.
Following the Five of Pentacles, I could definitely see if this is work related, like someone who has no problem like stealing my ideas and then claiming them for their own. Again, this is someone who definitely takes more than they give. The Ace of Cups, uh, the Ace of Cups, coming under the Hierophant. Um. Okay. Wow. For some of you, this is talking about love. And let's just say the person in the Seven of Swords is the one who threw you the tower. In the long run, I feel like you will be thankful. Because, you know, how long can you live in that energy? You know, seven is a spiritual number. But I feel like that's their spiritual, like that's their soul's lesson is to find their spirituality, to have these realizations about themselves. Um, but I also feel like we can't teach them. We're not meant to teach them, especially as it relates to love. You know, this could be definitely the energy of like someone who kind of keeps you on the hook. You're like, they communicate with me and then, and then they don't. And then I'm just sitting there waiting and wondering. Hmm. I think I'm going to take five cards across since we got five major arcanas. But anyways, the Ace of Cups and the Hierophant above that. I feel like this is saying that, you know, even if I had dealt with someone again who took and took and took, um, the sun, it, it's almost like the sun can't, the sun won't allow you to deny it anymore. You still have free will, you know, you can deny it, but the sun makes it very clear. Again, what's done in the dark will come to the light. So anyone in this seven of swords energy, you know, any of the, um, you know, what they're doing, let's just say against you, it does feel like it's going to be very clear. Especially with the sun also opening up this line. And then we have the seven of cups. Seven of cups. Well, ace of cups is right before that. And in the seven of cups energy, um, you know, it can, it can be energy that feels chaotic. But it feels like this ace, this ace of cups is being offered. Or maybe as you pray, you start to feel that there is other love out there. And there is, you know, again, to be with the person of the Seven of Swords, we ourselves need to lower our, our vibration. But as you start to evolve, which I feel like many of you um, that watch these readings, I feel like you are evolving. Then you, then it's almost like you, you really need to be just honest with yourself. So the seven of cups makes me feel like this ace is coming in. You know, it may be the blessing that the hierophant that I feel is talking about. And then trying to make a decision if, I should accept that cup. You know, there is a theme running through September's readings. And one of those themes is a lot of people dealing with people who are just untrustworthy. You know, and I feel like it's it's like a lack mentality. That's where it comes from. But I also know that you know, sometimes we want to fix people, right? We want to help them evolve. But this person, they're not, you know, I'm not going to say they won't evolve, but they're going to do it on their own terms. So, you know, the Seven of Cups is being tied back to the Seven of Swords, trying to make a decision of whether I accept this Ace of Cups, but the Seven of Swords must still have some effect Otherwise, I feel like it'd be, it'd be a lot easier to accept this cup. 
And I do feel like it's a new cup. And I'm saying that because the sun is also here. So I feel like the sun wouldn't be here, especially twice. You know, the sun's illuminating the person in the Seven of Swords energy. You know, it's just like they can't hide anymore. Now it's going to be up to me whether I continue to allow that energy. But then the high priest is your intuition. You know, for some of you, it's like this is what you've been overcoming. But it's clearly showing how, you know, as you're trying to make decisions, let's say moving forward, both the Tower and the Seven of Swords is still part of that decision making. You know, I get it where like, okay, so this Ace, you know, because I feel like <clears throat> love shows up unexpectedly. And sometimes a new love can show up like during our darkest moments. But then I have that fear of, well, I, I just can't do it again, right? I just can't give myself away again. And I feel like that's why the High Priestess, the Sun, and the Hierophant are here to help you. To help you um, really see everything clearly. You just need to be honest with yourself at the same time. So, am I going to shut down my heart? Right? Am I going to no longer allow love in my life? Again, personal choice. But I feel like the Hierophant is blessing this cup. The sun is illuminating it. You know, the sun will illuminate the things done in the dark. But it's also going to illuminate things that come in the light. And then the Seven of Cups is like free will. All right, let's keep going. We have the King of Swords. Um, this is probably you. You know, it can be another Aquarius, Gemini, or a Libra. But honestly, when I'm doing a reading, I feel like I really feel like you're all people, unless. You know, unless I feel it otherwise. So let's talk about the King of Swords. And by the way, male or female, it doesn't matter. King of Swords is someone who, um, I don't know, I feel like demands truth, right? Speaks the truth. This is someone who does have integrity. This is someone who will use that sword, right? If something is working against me, then, you know, and I feel like this is something I learn. It's like finding that courage through the strength card. Mm, Ace of Wands. First of all, it's mirroring the High Priestess. And coming under the Five of Pentacles. It is truly like the High Priestess is guiding you. Your intuition signs will be sent your way. This is about inspired action. It is an energy of action. And that may be why I said in the Five of Pentacles, I don't feel like I have the luxury of like just crying in my bed. I have to keep on moving. I can see how this can tie back to like a job, but also love. And it may be both. But I kind of love the Ace of Wands coming out right now, especially mirroring the High Priestess. So, you know, if I'm unsure of which direction to take, you know, just sit with a quiet mind. I feel like your guides will help, again, illuminate that for you. You know, the Ace of Wands definitely represents passion and desire. And some of you may question, like, which direction do I go? I would say follow your passion. Follow your passion. But it does require action at the same time. We have the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. But, again, doesn't have to be. You know, 
this queen's holding out her cup. And, you know, part of me is thinking, well, that kind of makes me feel like she's ready, right? She's ready to accept a cup. But it definitely feels like, and I, I kind of feel like this is you again. Um, which tells me that the Seven of Swords probably was, you know, of an emotional nature. You know, someone who um, probably hurt you like emotionally and then look at this the king of cups of the queen and king of cups are coming out together and by the way the king of cups is coming under the ace of cups look at this king it's like he's getting ready to get out of his chair interesting that the queen is looking right back at this king hmm and the king not only has the ace of cups above it, also the hierophant. You know, you can definitely talk about like-minded energy at the same time. You know, both these people enjoy love. Doesn't mean I have to have love. But they really enjoy having that partner, that special person. And I feel like it's this queen who had to deal with the Seven of Swords. And the Five of Pentacles, again, change. So, the Tower, change. But the Sun illumination so it feels like aquarius like this cup comes in this ace of cups comes in not only the ace of cups you also have the ace of wands and then ace of wands mirroring your intuition ace of cups feels like blessing so i feel like this king and queen are let's just say meant to be together but I definitely feel like this queen, and again, male or female, um, you know, has dealt with someone who just carried untrustworthy energy. You know, that little liar. A person who doesn't want to face the truth. So instead of facing the truth, I'll just tell you what you want to hear. But the sun doesn't allow this person to get away with it anymore. I love that the king and queen came out together of the same suit. She's looking right at this king. This king is about to get out of his chair. Both of them have their cups in front of them. You know what I mean? Like not behind them. So I feel like even, you know, even if I'm not looking for love, I feel like love is going to find me. And one of the themes that I have found throughout the readings for September is for those who are dealing or have dealt with, let's just let's just call this person in the Seven of Swords a narcissist, whether it's someone I work with, whether it's someone I love, or both, right? The taker. I take more than my fair share. Will this queen... You know, and again, this can certainly be someone who, you know, communicates and then ghosts you. And the theme I've been finding is like, right when like new love wants to find you, this person makes a repeat appearance. Why? Well, they don't want to make you happy, but yet they don't want to see you happy. You know, that's lower vibrational energy. All right, let's keep going. Interesting. We have the King of Wands. We have a lot of people on the table. King of Wands, King of Action. Coming under the Seven of Cups. You know, the King of Wands is mirroring the tower. 
So, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like this King of Wands. And, and, you know, again, I'm not really thinking of the sign. Just thinking of the person. But because he's mirroring the tower, makes me wonder. You know, because the King of Cups is the one who has the Ace of Cups above it with the Hierophant above it. So, you know, much like a lot of other readings, I would not be surprised if, like, whether I accept this Ace of Cups or not, it just feels like someone may make a repeat appearance as soon as you're ready to move on. Interesting, it's like this King of Wands is looking back. Like, what is she doing? What is he doing? Who is this person that's coming in offering their love? I don't feel like he likes it. But yet at the same time, he's mirroring that tower. Hmm. All right, I'm going to keep going. I was only going to do two lines, but I feel like I want to do one more. Four of Wands. Well, this is my favorite love card. This is about commitment. And there's no way in hell the Seven of Swords is able to make a true commitment. I may tell you I want to make a commitment. They're lying about it. This is a true commitment. I call it the marriage card. I call it the commitment card. Because, you know, not all of us want to get married again. But just, you know, the symbol of marriage. Something I, I, I want to last for the rest of my life. And I feel like the potential is here. Will I allow it? You know, the strength card being your very first card. It does feel like, you know, I need to look within. I need to understand energy that I've been tempted to, towards, you know, energy that just feels like it was of a lower vibration. And listen, maybe my vibration was at the same place at that time. But I feel like you must have grown. You must have evolved. And, you know... It's almost like, I don't know, some of you may have been dealing with someone who's even like got their hands out as it, as it relates to your money. You know, let's say that I was in a, a relationship with this person and then, you know, we broke up. I could see them again taking more than their fair share. Anyways. Four of Wands. Commitment. The sun is mirroring it. So, you know, I feel this is a good thing. The Knight of Swords. Communication. Communication. And it's mirroring the High Priestess. So, anything is being said through this energy. The high Priest is just saying, trust your intuition. Some of you, I feel like you've already dealt with this energy. Like, you may have already put, you know, who's ever in the Seven of Swords. You may already have, like, said enough is enough. But it doesn't mean that, like, all the energy had been cleared. Because I feel like it is affecting your decision making. And it's interesting because I feel like this king is like just looking back to see, okay, what, what is she or he going to do next? Hierophant is blessing this cup. So that makes, that makes sense that the four of wands would then come out. And if I'm having a hard time making that decision, whether I accept this cup or not, the one thing I can say is... Again, I feel like this cup is blessed, but not just blessed. I feel like the sun 
helps illuminate to you. You know, let's just say, again, this is communication. And it is coming under the Ace of Wands. So to me, it feels like someone who wants to, you know, wants movement. Like, I'm going to communicate with you. Um, chances are to, you know, I feel like hopefully make a commitment with you. He's looking right back at that Four of Wands. Some of you could have been married to the person in the Seven of Swords. And, um, you know, maybe you did break up. And maybe the divorce was hard. Maybe it still is, right? And again, it's almost like I want it all. And sometimes I feel like I gotta, I gotta understand what am I fighting for? Like, like if, let's say this person is like, you know, I want everything. I want, I want the money. I want the house. I want everything. Um, look at that. Another seven, three sevens. Well, let's stop and talk about the seven of pentacles for a second. Because the Seven of Pentacles, the first lesson is patience. So maybe you did need time to, like, allow yourself to heal. You know, I feel like the Strength card is also relating to that Seven of Swords. Like, maybe you even put the blame on yourself. But I feel like the people of the Seven of Swords, you know, they can be very charming. They can talk you into something that, you know, they can promise you the world and deliver none. Yet the sun's just not going to allow that energy anymore. You know, I do have to face it. But with the sun, again, all around that, if I deny it, then I'm just fooling myself, really. So anyways, this is patience. But then this is also like your tree of life. You know, I feel like in the Seven of Pentacles, it talks about your soul seed of intentions. And different seeds are meant to come to fruition at different times. It, uh, you know, I relate it to like the apple tree. I'm not going to pick an apple before it's ripe. I could be tempted to, but then it'll just be bitter. Well, what was that? Interesting. I don't know what that noise was. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, you know, and I feel like in the Seven of Pentacles energy, again, because I feel I read it like your soul's intention. Certain seeds have already been planted before we even came into this lifetime. It's like different experiences our soul wanted to have. And... You know, that means even the difficult energy, because I do feel like some souls and you're like, I feel like I'm one of them. You know, I didn't come down into this lifetime. Uh, you know, maybe I regret it in a way, but in a, but I don't because I've learned so much from these difficult experiences and I've learned how strong I am. But anyways, I feel like, you know, it's like the wheel. We got to realize that these experiences that we're having, um, they're all teaching us something. And I also feel like in the Seven of Pentacles, you know, it's like harvest time. Something that's meant to be, but at the right time. And that's where patience comes into play. Excuse me. Ten of swords. Ten of swords. Wow. I'm sorry. I don't know why. I'm just like, oh. Ten of swords to me is... You know, it, it really is taking dagger after dagger after dagger in your back. 
it is the energy I feel of really becoming submissive to the energy. Maybe I just can't find my way out. But that's an illusion. This can talk about a repeat pattern. And that's kind of what I felt with this person. Like, you know, like I give you the tower and then this king shows back up again. Right when I start to get, you know, follow my passions, my desires, boom, they're back again. And then it throws me back. But I feel like the time comes where, you know, especially if you have this realization of, wait a minute, I've been in this repeat pattern with this person for way too long. You know, the one thing you can say about the Ten of Swords is you gave it your all. You gave it your all. And, you know, the Hierophant, unless it's a Taurus for you, um, definitely feels like, you know, it feels like God. Um, your whole spiritual team recognizing that. And... You know, I feel like when we have that realization and say to ourselves, I'm done with this pattern, I'm going to break this pattern, you know, it could be like, um, again, a soul's lesson and finding the courage to like, let it go, let it be like, you know, because I feel like who's ever in this seven of swords energy, I feel like they're going to do the same thing to the person after you. And they probably did the same thing to the person before you. So don't blame yourself. You know, you may say like, why couldn't they love me? Well, because they love themselves more, period. And listen, there's nothing wrong with loving yourself. You should love yourself. But, you know, I feel like we're our souls are here really to um, learn empathy and compassion. This person's got no interest in that. So, dagger after dagger they gave me. But truth be told, dagger after dagger I took. You know, the higher can again be a number five, change. I feel like what it's saying is when I make this realization, when I decide to make that change, then I am going to be blessed. It would be a shame if this type of energy stopped you from living the type of life that is showing for you. Right. First of all, it's showing a like minded energy to people who and, and I love that they're coming out together, the queen and the king of cups. And I do feel like it's you, you know, with someone else. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we feel like, oh, well, we have to evolve ourselves or we have to have our own shit together before we can accept this new cup, but sometimes I feel like there is someone who may come in like at our lowest moment and help us move on. But I feel like you do like, like, you know, you do have to have the recognition of if I've been in a repeat pattern with that just means I probably given this person time after time after time, but they just keep letting me down. All right, let's keep going. I want to see what mirror is that for of, of wands. Look at this temperance. Well, hello, divine timing. Um, card is Sagittarius. But temperance's first message is patience. Just like the seven of pentacles. Patience, my child. But really trusting in divine timing. You know, let's say, again, I feel like sometimes we got to let go of control. Sometimes we got to, like, not try to change someone because, you know, again, I don't feel like we'd be successful anyway. 
you know, the sun is just illuminating their deception to you. But it really is going to be up to you whether you recognize that. I feel like I don't know how you can deny it because the sun is just like covering that energy. But I also feel like what a shame it would be if I then say, you know, listen, first of all, I feel like as you start to have these realizations, as you start to tell yourself the truth, you're completely honest with yourself. I feel like that alone is a sign to the universe, right? Doesn't necessarily mean like, okay, I want to fall in love again. But I feel like love will still find you. And I feel like in divine timing. You know, it's like your spiritual team has been with you through this whole journey, through the towers. And I love that temperance is mirroring the Four of Cups. I'm sorry, the Four of Wands, the marriage card. And saying to you, in divine timing, you know, it's almost like, like temperance is saying, if I come in before the right time and you don't have this realization yet that you've been in this repeat pattern, then would you even accept this Ace of Cups? You know, and I feel like when I clear this energy, I learn the difference between you know, let's just put it this way. I feel like there's all different levels to love. doesn't mean this person didn't love you. It just means that, you know, it's their way or the highway. It means that this person expects other people to lower their vibration and to live their life the way they see it. But I feel like many of you, again... Um, you know, I feel like you have evolved or you are evolving in your life. You know, remember, our soul is here to expand, to evolve. And the only way you can evolve is, first of all, to go through these experiences, but also be honest with ourselves, close the chapters that want to be closed. You know, again, if someone's got me on the hook of contacting me and then and then they stop. And then they contact me and they stop like, ah, back and forth, back and forth. I know you don't want to live in that energy. And, you know, sometimes we can think that this, like that we love this person, but then real love comes in. And then you understand the difference, or let's say the different vibrations of love. I feel like temperance is also, you know, I don't know how to say this. Um, I hate to say the controller of the soulmates, but let's just put it this way. I feel like temperance um, is about balance within the soulmate energy. And I don't feel like the seven of swords is a soulmate. Could be a karmic, you know, could be there to teach you something. You know, so that would be a karmic soulmate. But I don't feel like it's ultimately who you're meant to end up with. Now, if I never change that pattern, then let's face it, everything remains the same. Yet I feel like this king and queen, they feel like the one who the ones who could take this ace, this ace of cups, which really speaks about unconditional love. And I do feel like this cup, again, is being blessed. And then take that Ace of Wands, right? Following, following that inspired action. You know, the Ace of Wands does, pick, does talk about something that's going to pique your interest. You know, it's going to feel passionate. But then I do have to reach out and, well, take the action. And then, you know, temperance is making sure these two soulmates, you can literally see her doing it, making sure their cups are equally filled. I often feel like when we find, you know, 
our true soulmate that we are meant to spend, let's say, the rest of our lives with. And many times it does come after hard lessons. One of the things you learn is what you don't want to love. Now you can recognize that lower vibrational energy. You know, and think about the law of attraction. If my vibration stays low, well, then that's what's going to come back to me. The universe, the universe must meet. It must meet me right where I'm at. But when I realize that, again, I've given my power away over and over again to someone who just doesn't deserve it, and I may call that love, but I have a feeling for many of you, it's like once this ace comes in, then you're going to really know the true meaning of love. So I love that temperance is here mirroring that four of wands, the true commitment. You know, because in the four of wands, I feel like there's no doubt that these two lovers want to be together forever. No one is holding back. You know, it's like there's just no doubt. And sometimes... Divine timing is waiting on us. And that kind of feels like a little bit of what's going on here. I feel like this communication is coming in no matter what. And, you know, when I say communication, it can be totally unexpected. But yet in the same breath feels definitely meant to be. And I love the sun mirroring the seven of pentacles because think of the sun, the seven of pentacles of like your seed souls of intention. Each one is a seed. And I'm either going to nurture that seed when it comes to fruition, when it is harvest time, let's say. I'm either going to nurture it through love, watering the sun, right? And then it just blossoms. or I'm just going to let it dry up and die. That's free will. Okay. Mm, Knight of Wands on the bottom of the deck. Some of you, this could certainly be the energy of feeling like, you know, let's say that you've realized I've been in this repeat pattern with someone of a lower vibration. I mean, there's no other way to read it, to be honest with you. I, I just can find no other way to read it. And I feel like one of the other realizations you're having is that this past energy is, is still like, hmm, how do I want to say it? It's still part of your decision making, you know, because I feel like this Ace of Cups is going to show no matter what. But then me being a little fearful of whether I accept it or not. And one of the things in the Seven of Cups, I feel like the person has a hard time choosing is because they are saying to themselves, well, listen, I have taken this cup before and it brought me nothing but heartache. You know, that tower is affecting your decision making. But the sun is here to help illuminate that. That's probably why the high priestess is also here. You know, this may be a time where it's really going to ask you to trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. I find it interesting that we have two kings mirroring each other. I do feel like one is you. But I do feel like the other one is the seven of swords. And, you know, it's like I can see the repeat patterns just within the readings where it's like the Ace of Cups wants to show love, you know, a new love wants to begin. And then maybe as I start to move into that, this person's like, boom, they decide to reach out again. And it is, I feel like this King of Wands is kind of looking back, like keeping an eye on things. But not in a good way. 
yeah, I want to say with temperance here, you don't have, like, this isn't something you have to worry about. I don't mean it in a way um, where I need to be fearful of that. I just need to be able to say no. Look at that, the Ten of Cups under that Knight of Wands. So, to me, a knight is always going to complete their mission. You know, whether we accept what they bring in or not is up to us. But the Knight of Wands is about passion and desire. It's also fast-moving energy. And that can throw me off course a little bit, especially if I just got done dealing with this energy. Some of you, maybe you're still dealing with it. Maybe this is exactly what the reading is about. It's like, you know, it's like you can't deny it because the sun is all around it. And the sun, you know, what's done in the dark will come to the light, period. But I feel like for some of you, it feels like a karmic lesson because of the seven of pentacles here. And by the way, if it's a karmic lesson and you've learned that karmic lesson and some of you, it's simply that I allowed myself to get a re get into a repeat pattern with this person. Pretty much I've given them um, like the, uh, I'm allowing them to determine what my life is going to look like. So in a way, I need to reclaim my power myself. You know, strength card could certainly talk about the temptation of the repeat pattern with this person. But strength card is also that ability to find courage within yourself where these towers no longer hold any power. Divine timing over this commitment. The Hierophant blessing this Eight of Cups. The queen and king, who I feel do speak about love, coming out together. She's looking right at him. He's about to get ready to get to, to move out of his chair. All right, let's bring in the gilded tarot. I really didn't mean to take this many cards. It's almost like you can't see it. Give him one more shuffle. You know, three sevens on the table definitely feels like um, these are, some of this is about spiritual lessons. Some of you, it is about a karmic lesson. But it is nothing you can't overcome. You know, when you're in it, it can feel difficult. When you're in it, you may think, oh, but this is the person I love. But they're not treating you right. And don't you deserve better? All right. Let's start at the beginning. But let's read it as a whole. You know, you have three cards of Leo, by the way. So, even though I haven't done Leo's reading yet, it is next. For some of you, I would suggest that maybe you watch it. Um, because it may talk about, like, you pulling on that energy. We have the Emperor. Uh, Card of Aries. But, the Emperor is mirroring the Four of Wands, the marriage card. So let's talk about the emperor outside of being an Aries. This is someone that we can look up to. This is someone who is empathetic, who does care about their fellow man more than themselves. Doesn't mean they don't love themselves. You know, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Um, this is someone who has been through it. And, you know, maybe that's why communication comes in, you know, and it can be at a period of time, again, where you're not feeling 
like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to fall in love. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Um, but at the same time, I feel like this is someone who would give you an empathetic ear. This is someone who's methodical. Definitely puts plans in place. And that may simply mean that, you know, putting a plan in place could certainly help. This could be someone who's a little older, but it doesn't have to be. It is the father figure, but I also read it as a business owner. And again, what I do, um, and I can, you know, it can be any occupation, but I feel like the underlying current of it is my empathy. This is someone who definitely wants to help the underdog. But listen, they've learned like who to give a hand. Like, am I giving a hand out or a hand up? Mm. Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands. Interesting because we have the King of Wands here. And I'm not feeling so good about this King of Wands, to be honest. And again, I'm not even reading it as a fire sign. I'm reading it, the energy I feel from this person. Almost like, you know, as you start to find joy again in your life, sometimes these type of people in the Seven of Swords try to make a repeat appearance. But again, this is very like-minded energy here. You know, the Queen of Wands is an action-oriented energy. This is someone who really has learned not to let fear rule the day. I follow my desires, my passions. And again, maybe this is something I've been learning. She is coming over the high priestess. Trusting my intuition. You know, and I also want to say this is great energy if like, let's say you lost a job and maybe it is due to someone else. You know, someone else is again, you know, someone who you know, you're talking to and you tell them like, oh, I got these great ideas. And next thing you know, they run to the boss and they claim them as their own. Maybe someone got you fired. But yet, again, I feel like you're only moving to bigger and better places. We have the Six of Pentacles over the Sun and over the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, well, that makes sense because Six of Pentacles to me, first of all, remember how I said it in the Five of Pentacles? I feel like, you know, even though that's temporarily difficult energy, um, I do feel like I'm moving closer and closer to my soulmate family, the right people at the right time. You know, the people who help elevate me, lift me up. This is also learning that fine art of give and take. Again, I feel like for some of you, you gave, you gave, you gave, you gave, and you gave. And they took, and they took, and they took, and they took. And life felt unbalanced because of that. Someone taking advantage of your empathetic heart. But the sun, again, is illuminating that. You know, why? So that you can find true balance. It's not about shutting down the empathy and the compassion within you, right? I don't want to give someone else a power. I don't want to be like them. Quite the opposite. I don't want to be like them. And... You know, some of you, this can talk about someone who, like, maybe you even gave a lot of money to. You're thinking that you're helping them, but really, they're just blowing it 
on who knows what, right? So that's a hand out. It's not a hand up. Six of Pentacles is about learning that fine art of give and take. We have the interesting, the two pentacles now over the ace of cups. It almost makes me feel like we're before. Some of you are going to be like, no way am I going to accept another ace of cups here. You're considering it. But this to me, you know, they call it the juggler's card. I think it's more about using your logical mind. You know, not a fear-based mind. Another way of saying that is, okay. So this ace presents itself. Will this ace expand my life or is it going to deplete it? I've had enough of my life being depleted by other people. So now I want to know, you know, and again, I feel like the Harvin's blessing that cup. So I do feel like it's a higher, I do feel like it's a much higher, higher vibrational energy, higher vibrational love. But then the ball is put in your court. You do get to make that decision. But I feel like I'm really not using a fear-based mind here. I'm using more of my logic. Um, three of Pentacles. You know, I say this all the time, but I love the Three of Pentacles for a couple different reasons. First of all, I feel like, you know, when we're going through difficult times, I feel like one of the one of the areas that will help us to overcome is our creative self. Do you know, and, and why? Because, you know, if I'm doing something creative and that means something that feels good to you, it allows you to kind of get lost in it. You know what I mean? Where I'm not only I'm not just thinking about this, this energy of the seven of swords. Three Pentacles talks about your individuality and other people taking notice of that. You know, someone could have like put you down, ripped you down, told you you weren't worthy enough, told you, and it could have been a boss. It could have been a person in the Seven of Cups. It could have been both. But this is really learning that, you know, you are enough. You are exactly who you're meant to be. I could definitely see also like if I've been dealing with someone at, let's just say my place of employment, who um, takes my creative thoughts and then claims them for their own. I can definitely see you like saying, okay, enough of that. Even Like maybe my boss took their side. I could see you leaving and then starting your own you know, your own business. Even if you're just at the beginning of it, it does talk about appreciating who you are, but also other people are taking notice of you in the Three of Pentacles. You know, in the Three of Pentacles, I'm not doing something so other people take notice of me. I'm really just allowing myself to get lost in this energy. But it is the recognition, again, of you. Kind of makes me feel like because the two of pentacles is right before that, where the ball's put in your court, I kind of feel like you're saying yes. It is also mirroring the emperor. You know, the six of pentacles. The Two of Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles, that fine art of give and take. You know, have I just been giving it all away but not receiving? So that alone feels like a lesson. Like I've got to find that fine balance. The Three of Pentacles, the appreciation of who you are. No matter what anybody else tells you. You know, especially with temperance down here. I feel like, you know, divine's, divine really wants you to understand that you're exactly who you're meant to be. 
even these difficult lessons. You know, maybe you couldn't become all that you're becoming without those lessons. I could see the person in the three or the seven of swords telling you, you know, you won't be successful. You won't find love. You know, bad, negative, negative, negative. But those are all just lies. That's their own limited beliefs. You know, that someone is trying to control you, um, though they don't want to give you what you need. They don't want anybody else to give it to you either. So sooner or later, you've got to take control back. Let's keep going. The world. So... There is a new chapter opening up. That's what the world signifies. And by the way, following the Three of Pentacles, it's saying that be who you are. Love who you are. You know, this is a very spiritual time in your life. So that tells me that you have evolved. You know, and by the way, when your vibration lifts, and someone else doesn't? I don't know. First of all, I feel like the universe will will try to make them fade away. But I feel like if the world shows up, you're going to let it fade away also. You know, it's like believing in yourself. You know, the next chapter, here it is. And I feel like, you know, when the world shows up, it shows up because you're ready. Because you are ready to close the door. And you're ready to see what's next. Right? But also recognizing that it's your seeds of intention that you're planting right now that are, that are going to determine your harvest. You know, I want to say in the fall, but we're literally in the fall. You know, and then think of the emperor. He is the seed planter. He, she. So this can simply represent for some of you that certain seeds are now, you know, ready to be harvested. It is the next chapter. And it is coming over you. Okay, we're going to take these in the order they came. Hmm, Eight of Swords over the Ace of Wands. The King of Pentacles over the Queen and the Seven of Swords. Um, King of Pentacles can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Doesn't have to be, though. Five of Swords. Interesting. Justice, Carter Libra, but it is the energy of cutting ties, you know, and I feel like when we cut ties to whatever justice is asking us to cut ties to, if I've been feeling like I've been in an unbalanced life, the minute I cut those ties, everything feels balanced. Things start to feel right again. I definitely feel like this is talking about cutting of those ties, especially because it's coming right next to the Five of Swords. Toxic energy. You know, unfortunately, the Eight of, the eight of Swords is also here. That is a self-created prison. But the Ace of Wands is under it. And, you know, no one can really uncreate this prison but you. But then I feel like it's freedom. Like that feeling of real freedom. I feel like some of you are going back and forth, back and forth. You know, maybe I just hope someone would love me the way that I feel like I deserve to be loved. But yet, they just don't. 
sometimes it's because they simply don't know how to love. And then we have the seven of swords again over the four of, uh, the four of wands. So what is surrounding justice? First of all, this king of wands that I felt was kind of like looking in, almost not wanting you to be happy. But now you're realizing, you know, with the five of swords there, five change, right? But it's now like, I understand what's toxic. You know, this five of swords goes into the ten of swords. So if I expect there to be change, there's not going to be. The only change that I feel like can really happen is when I decide to cut these ties. You know, justice can represent karma, karmic. So for some of you, this was a karmic lesson. And even though the Eight of Swords is that self-created prison, that Ace of Wands underneath it makes me feel like, you know, even if I'm, you know, the Eight of Swords is really like trying to protect myself, right? I don't want to deal with this energy anymore. And, you know, I feel like those are the ones who say, there's no way I'm going to open myself up to love, new love. And that, you know, that may simply mean that, like, you know, certain energy hasn't been cleared yet. But, again, it's a free will choice. But what follows justice? Again, the Seven of Swords. And it's exactly what I was feeling earlier. Like, I feel like there's blessings coming your way. And then I feel like this person who didn't know how to treat you, you know, whether that be work or love. I could see them then making a repeat appearance. More reason why I need to bring those walls down, right? Because the high priestess wants you to trust your intuition. And I feel like that Ace of Wands under it, it, it's like signifying to you that there will be new opportunities, that there are adventures left to be had. You know, and then the King of Pentacles right in the middle. Well, you know, I'm really reading him as energy. And this is someone, you know, when they look at their life, they look at the big picture. They break it down that way, right? I look at the big picture. I can see it all now. You know, I do feel like for probably quite a few, you were in this, you know, what? Well, I want to say committed relationship, but, you know, I don't really feel there was true commitment there. And, you know, the world is almost like saying, if I never have that real, if I don't allow myself to have that realization, then... Will it just re keep repeating itself? And I feel like the answer is yes, yes, yes. But justice is the opportunity to like have that realization. You know, when justice shows in a reading, it really wants to make you whole again. You know, what's fair and just in your world? And I feel like when I use the sword of justice and cut those ties then I find balance immediately. Doesn't mean everything is hunky-dory, but those scales that were once unbalanced, they now become balanced. I feel like a big message here for you is if I'm expecting someone of a lower vibration to change, I just don't think it's going to happen. And I feel like this has all been more about a lesson of, first of all, loving yourself enough, understanding that, you know, you were created exactly as you were meant to. Even some of these difficult lessons were on your path. But then when you overcome it, man, what a sense of power that gives you. 
you know, just the Eight of Swords alone, when I'm, I uncreate that prison, I am free. It doesn't even mean that I'm saying, yes, I'm going to accept this, what I feel is a blessed Eight of Cups. But what it does mean is that you are going to accept this Ace of Wands and you are going to start following like inspired action. It's like your spiritual team is saying, we're going to help show you the way to really, you know, what feels like wants to be next. To me, when the world shows up, it means your spirituality has grown. It means that you're ready for this new adventure, let's say. But you're just not meant you're just not meant to bring everything along with it. Interesting. You know, this is one of those difficult readings, yet, you know, I can read between the lines and I can see that there really are blessings um, that want to open up for you. But there's also lessons. We have the Queen of Swords over the Knight of Swords. And then, hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. So the lovers is mirroring the sun. So, you know, to me, this should put your mind at least a little bit at ease. Because I feel like the lovers is also relating to that ace of cups. And I don't feel like the eight of cups is the person in the seven of swords. Why? Because I don't feel like they know how to love unconditionally. Again, I feel like it's their way or the highway. And even if I choose the highway, then they try to pull you in again. And I feel like there is the lesson. I just can't keep allowing them to pull me back into their vibration. You know, this is the card of Gemini. This is a head over heart decision. But I also feel the chemistry within this energy. And it's coming over the seven of pentacles. So I feel like this is also meant to be. You know, the Queen of Swords, her sword is up. So I feel like she is cutting a tie. This is someone who um, has regained her voice. To be very clear. It does make me feel like the energy of the Eight of Swords, that self-created prison, it does make me feel like you do set yourself free. And it's through the realizations that you set yourself free. You know, we don't need to build up walls to protect us. Our intuition is our protector. Our intuition will always let us know is something is good or not. If it's not, then red flags, you know, that feeling in your gut. Don't second guess it. It feels like you are literally saying to this person, the Seven of Swords, your time is done here. Your time is done. And by the way, in the lover's energy, in this image, you can see the feminine, like in the current energy, and you can see the masculine behind her hasn't quite reached her yet. But I can feel it. I can feel it. And it's on your tree of life. And it's being illuminated by the sun. We have the Eight of Wands, beautiful, over the Ten of Swords. So I feel like at this point, many of you have freed yourself. Many of you have really taken a good hard look at what's toxic, what has been toxic. You know, the Eight of Wands, I do read as vibration. 
like what I think about, I bring about. And it's really the intentions that I send out to the universe. And that's what the universe must meet. You know, in the Ten of Swords, I kind of expect another dagger. And therefore, I keep receiving daggers. But now, I kind of feel like you're having a change of mind, a change of heart. Now, I feel like you're realizing that certain people are just are not going to change. But that doesn't mean you can't change your life. This can also be fast-moving energy. And let me tell you, if... Like in the Ten of Swords, you say enough is enough. Then I do feel like things change very quickly. Right next to the lovers. And then we have the Eight of Pentacles over Temperance. Two Eights back to back, 88. Some of you, um, that may mean something to you. Though you do have, you know, there's more than one eight in this reading. I think what I can see is three. So that can certainly talk about, you know, I make a change in one area in my life and then and then everything else follows suit. The Eight of Pentacles talks about the willingness to go into something as the apprentice. Let's say that this was all talking about a job. And you've just been dealing with toxic people at your job. And you've been thinking about doing your own thing. This would give you confirmation. You know, if I'm asking, can I be successful? Will other people take notice? Well, that's what the Three of Pentacles is saying. Yes, they will. And they'll admire you for it. This is the willingness to go into something as the apprentice, knowing that I'll learn as I go. And temperance is right there as your support. I feel like the person in the Eight of Pentacles becomes the master teacher. You know, it answers a question, will I be successful? And the answer is, if you put your focus there. Now, of course, it can be relating to your finances, to your creativity, to starting your own business. You know, the emperor can certainly represent, you know, you being the boss Yet, I don't feel like like all my focus needs to be here. This is really allowing your creative house to shine. To me, it feels like something that you're just naturally good at. Maybe I don't know that. Maybe your interest is going to be peaked and you decide to follow it. And next thing you know, it becomes what you do in life. Okay, well, keep messing up the cards. Um, what do I want to look at? You know, it's interesting because when I go back to like read, clarify, I feel like I already understand it like I do understand this reading completely um so when I like re-clarify I'm doing it more for you sorry I had to take a drink but what do I want to look at Let's look at, hmm, I'm not even sure what to look at. Let's look at the lovers. Again, it can simply mean a head over heart decision, but that means the decision is on the table. That means that that Ace of Pentacles, or Ace of Cups, has shown. But listen, it may start by feeling it at first.
We have the Nine of Cups. Beautiful. Oh, I feel like we can take a breath now. Nine of Cups is about finding inner harmony within oneself. After all these swords. You know, this is a little bit of a difficult reading. But this is real life. So, and I feel like justice is a, bi is a big part of finding that inner harmony. Why? Because she's sitting right next to the Five of Swords. That's toxic energy. Inner harmony. But it's also fulfillment of wishes. Some of you, because it's a nine, it can talk about, like, becoming single. So to me, it's like you have cut those ties. And this is about you enjoying your life again. Even if there's nobody else in it. Though, someone does want to come in. And, you know, when you find inner harmony, that's a certain vibration. So, I, it's like you don't even have to fear that, you know, when love re-enters your life, let's say, that, first of all, if it's the same type of energy, you're going to know it. You're going to, it's going to be so clear. Excuse me one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had a knock at the door. Come and knock at my door. All right, so anyways, we're looking at the lovers. First of all, I, I think what I was saying is this can be singular energy. So definitely means that you've cut ties. Definitely means that person in the Seven of Swords doesn't have any more power over you. Um, this is really where you're really starting to love your life again. Doesn't mean everything is going perfect. But, you know, I do read this as you becoming, you know, I want to say single. But I have a feeling because we're looking at the lovers. And again, let's just say the masculine energy hasn't reached us yet. But we're going to feel it. like you're raising your cup hello son again holy cow you know, there's no way you can hide untruths from yourself at this point. And man, oh man, do I feel like, you know, again, I haven't done Leo's reading yet. Um, and, you know, truth be told, I hope it's not as hard as this one is. But yet, I feel like now that we reached the Nine of Cups, it feels like we can take a deep breath. Like we can breathe again. And then the sun. It's like the sun has always been at your back. Well, the tower came. You know, it did show in reverse. And I almost feel like I have to leave it that way. But then look at this. The ten of cups. Interesting. Because I feel like the tower showing now in reverse. There goes the power of the tower. And the sun, the illuminator, right? So, really, everything will be clear. Like, you know, it's it's hard to say to you after all this difficult energy, just to trust what you feel. But I do feel that, especially once you arrive at that Nine of Cups. You know, that prison has been uncreated. The ties have been cut. You know, if someone makes a repeat appearance, I feel like what you would say to them is, sorry, sorry, my friend, but I am not the same person that I used to be. Like, I am clear about you and the destruction you have caused in my life. And I'm not even going to put it all on you because I allowed it, but I am no longer allowing it. 
you know, the sun also coming over the lovers again, it's like confirmation um, to trust your intuition. You know, do I feel like the lovers is talking about anything dark? Well, no, that's why I feel like the tower has come in reversed. And then it moves into the Ten of Cups. So from singular energy to the house of love. You know, is it immediate? It might be because we do have the Eight of Wands underneath it. And I feel like once I find this freedom from this these walls being put down and I trust my intuition as the determiner of whether something is going to be good once i realize you know that that you know i am special just like divine is is recognizing about you right your individuality and i feel like and maybe all areas of your life your life and by the way i also love this energy the ten of cups over the eight of pentacles especially with the emperor for those who are doing, like, working from home, doing your own thing. You know, it feels like like a love of it. But the Nine of Cups, and now the Ten of Cups, with the Tower in reverse and the Sun as your illuminator. And what are we looking at? The lovers. This is not the same person. It does not mean that they won't make a repeat appearance, but I feel like there's no way they have a chance at this point. I feel like you have given your everything. And it still wasn't enough. For them. But not for who's ever in the Ace of Cups that again, I feel is being blessed. Temperance, divine timing, mirroring that four of wands. You know, maybe I do need to spend a little bit of time just in a single status so that I can find myself again, so I can find, you know, inner joy um, and learn to appreciate my life again, especially once all these swords are just like, you know, because you do have, like, very difficult sword energy here. Um, but, you know, if anybody knows how to overcome it, it is you. Temperance is saying, it's all I've been waiting for, my dear. It's for you to uncreate this prison. You to realize that someone has kept you in a repeat, a repeat pattern. But you did allow it. And that's not judgment. It's only, you know, because I have to know that. I have to know that. I have to understand that. I feel like, you know, I know it's difficult. And I know some of you are like, man, I really wanted that person to change. But I feel like this reading is just saying to you, they're not going to. Don't think that that's that. You know what I mean? And I'm not even trying to talk you into falling back in love again. I feel like love will do that all on its own. I couldn't be more happier that the Nine of Cups came out with the Sun, the Tower in Reverse, that then moves into the Ten of Cups. Like, beautiful. And that does feel like divine to me. Wow. Okay. I'm thinking, is there even anything left to um, clarify? I do feel as the Queen of Swords, it's like you are regaining your truth. You're reclaiming your truth. And I don't feel like you're afraid to speak it anymore. You know, again, I'm not going to try to talk you into like when this Ace of Cups comes in because it will. And it just will. And it, you know, the ball will be put in your court. And some of you are going to say yes and some of you are going to say no. And that's okay. 
You know what I mean? Like, I feel like just having the nine of cups to me is like, oh, thank God. Thank God. But in the nine of cups, I really am open. Right? I'm back to being me again. So, what a perfect time with temperance, divine timing. For this Ace of Cups, that one more time I'm going to say, I feel is being blessed. And I do feel like it is after the tower's energy. And I feel like that tower, it has no more power over you. That person in the Seven of Swords, and it could be multiple people. They don't have the power over you anymore. I could see some of you taking this very energy and these very lessons and then creating something. For, it's almost like I could write a book on how I went from hell to my heaven. Hmm. I don't know. I think I should leave it there. Um, because I feel like I, I feel like I feel like that's exactly what at least I was seeking for you. Well, I think I do want to look at the Eight of Swords because I want to see what happened that allowed you to uncreate this prison. Like what changed, other than you having this realization. Because you must have uncreated it. Otherwise, you couldn't move into the Nine of Cups energy. You know, again, I feel the Ace, the Queen of Swords is like reclaiming her power. And then the Eight, uh, or the Queen of Wands above it, someone who moves according to her passions, her desires. Let's just see if anything wants to come out over that. There's that Ace of Wands again. So now the Ace of Wands is under the Eight of, Eight of Swords, but now over the Eight of Swords. You've had that realization. You get it now. It's like that Ace of Wands, I can't deny it, right? I can no longer deny it. So I built those walls to protect myself from taking any more daggers in the back. But what I've come to the realization is, is that my intuition is what protects me. You know, divine protects me. I feel like taking these swords, you know, of course it can be a karmic lesson, but I feel like the lesson is just that I'm the one who kept taking these swords and then the page of cups. That makes sense because this is when you're really starting to allow yourself to love you again. To allow yourself to appreciate who you are. You know, I feel like where do we take a lot of this pain in our inner child? And this is where we're allowing our inner child to come out. Our playfulness. Love. You know, and I feel like in the Page of Cups energy, you know, I feel like it, it's coming as a page because I do feel like you're on your way to love again. Just not with this person. Not with the person who kept putting those daggers in your back. You know, that Eight of Wands is, or Ace of Wands is making it so very clear. It's below that Eight of Swords and it's above the Eight of Swords. And by the way, it's right next to the world. That feels like the perfect time for the next chapter now to begin. All right. I am going to take Mother Mary over this reading. Because this was a difficult reading. But yet, I also recognize the blessings within it. Let's go ahead and give them a cut since we're taking them over the reading. 
and Mother Mary. Any words of wisdom now that we have everything in front of us? You know, injustice where you cut those ties, mirroring the world, opening the next chapter. Tenderness. Well, that's the energy of the Empress. And it's interesting we have the Emperor here. I am both gentle and powerful. You know, this is where you're just allowing yourself to be you. I am both gentle and powerful. Tenderness. I feel like the tenderness is for yourself, though. You know, I do feel like that this Ace of Cups comes in. I feel like it comes in divine timing. Again, it's blessed. And then I feel like with Temperance here, right, that talks about divine timing. It's mirroring this Four of Wands, which is true commitment, true love. You know, the marriage card. Well, it just seems like the right time now. Now, how long is it from here to here? I feel like that's up to you. Like, if I don't recognize this pattern, if I don't realize that I'm giving and giving and giving to someone, and all they're doing is taking and taking, how long am I going to do that? Well, we got a lot, but I am going to take them. You know, I never refuse Mother Mary cards. So let's take him because, you know, these could be different messages for different people. Quiet. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. That's your intuition. Those are the signs. You know, and heaven is continuously sending you signs. But now you're getting them. Now you're hearing them. Joy. Thank God. Thank God. By enjoying this moment, I'm giving thanks to God for my life. You know, it's. It, I understand what these prayers are now. You know what many have, have you many of you have been praying, and it is like your prayers are being answered. Boy, do I feel like they're going to be different than what you expect. But in a way, now I feel like you can see. Honesty. That's like one of the major points of this reading. Honesty. I am in touch with my true feelings regarding this situation. Patience. That's temperance. I trust in divine timing. You know, think of the Nine of Cups where you finally have found that inner harmony. And then just being open to, you know, First of all, when you've, when you've reached that energy, that means you are paying attention to your intuition. That means if there are red flags, you're going to see them, you're going to know them. You'll feel them before they even arrive. I trust in divine timing, honesty, patience, family. I pray for my family and give this situation over to God for answers, support, and healing. And then last but not least, this makes a lot of sense, present moment energy. Present moment. I am fully present in the here and now. Why is that important? Because that's where your signs are sent. Not in the past, not in the future, right here, right now. Tenderness, quiet, joy. Honesty, patience, family, and present moment, and prayers. Wow. All right, Aquarius, I'm going to leave it there. Um, phew, what a reading. Like, I feel like it just took us on a roller coaster. I feel like it definitely took us on a roller coaster. 
And, um, you know, I do have to say that I just from, you know, messages that I've been getting and people who have been like emailing me, um, you know, have been getting readings and that I feel like a lot of people have been dealing with very difficult energy lately. And that could have something to do with, um, you know, I feel like I think there was like seven planets in retrograde and when I, and just not people, you know, here but also like family members and people I love. I feel like everyone's been dealing with some difficult energy, but maybe it's because like in a way we're all level leveling up. So honesty is probably the most important energy here right now, right? Because first and foremost, I have to be honest about what I'm accepting. You know, can I find joy in my life again? Absolutely. But it does mean that certain ties need to be cut. But I do feel like, again, you're reclaiming your voice. And if anybody that is not worth it makes a repeat appearance, boom. I feel like you're using the sword of this queen and you're like, no way. Some of you, you are being moved on this path of you creating something. Some of you, I could see you writing a book about this, you know, because I feel like once you've overcome this energy, I don't feel like you ever repeat it again. You know too much now. You're trusting within yourself and you're trusting within divine. So I don't feel like you repeat it. And I feel like that's the perfect energy of someone now helping their fellow man. Like, hey, I've been there. I've done that. I also thought my person was going to change. They didn't. I realized it was me who need, needed to make the change. And when I made that change, everything changed quickly quickly that ace of cups i feel like you take your time in it take your time in it you know you don't have to rush it you don't even have to say yes to it but listen i feel like if someone comes in and you've just dealt with all this energy because we're seeing the lovers and we had the nine of cups move into the ten of cups i feel like someone will be patient with you also and I wouldn't be surprised if they themselves have gone through similar type energies. So sometimes a love comes in, you know, sometimes we think we need to be perfectly healed before we allow love back in our lives. But sometimes soulmates come in right when we need them the most to help us see that we are worth so much more than what someone else has told us. But first and foremost, you just need to be honest with yourself. And I feel like that changes everything. That changes the game. That changes the game. All right, guys, I'm going to let that be. Um, I know this was a long reading, but I feel like it's what it needed to be. Um... You know, and I feel like I need to do a prayer for everyone this month that, you know, everyone is able to overcome this past energy, that everyone can find their own self-worth and really trust within themselves again and in divine. You know, know that prayers are being answered, but you need to pray them, right? You need to put that intention out there and then accept the solutions and the healing that comes back to you. Tenderness. That's the Empress's energy. That means I'm not going to allow people of the past who just didn't know how to love me right to stop me from having a good life. Again, you take as long as you need in that Nine of Cups, that inner harmony. But it is showing that that Ten of Cups is it's also coming. But bottom line is, the ball will be put in your court. But don't be surprised if someone comes in 
and you, and probably you into their lives at the same time where you're helping to heal those last broken pieces of each other. You know, that's what I feel like soulmates do. All right, I'm going to stop talking. Um, your comments will tell me everything. So I hope you comment. Let me know where you're at in the reading, especially those who have overcome some of this energy. I feel like you can help others who are stuck. You know what I mean? Who are, who are stuck in that energy um, of the past who, you know, if if I don't change, if I don't make those changes, then it does become my present and my future. Oh, man, I don't want that for you. I don't want that for you. So, you know, please use the comment section in that way, understanding that your words can truly help heal others. And, you know, I would love to hear if you have evolved from this energy. Um, it would just make me feel good. But it's not about me. Anyways, I'm going to let that be. I love you guys. I thank you. I thank you for being patient in these long readings. Um, again, I feel like September, they're extra long. But boy, they feel like they need to be. And that's just that. So I love you. I thank you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye. Oh, don't forget to check out Leo, uh, Leo especially with so much Leo out on the table. I haven't done it yet, but I will do it today. All right, guys. I love you. Bye-bye.